salvation sounds a new beginning as distant hearts begin believing redemption's spirit is unrelenting your love goes on your love goes on you can't Carry us, carry us When the world gives way You cover us, cover us With your endless grace Your love is relentless Your love is relentless Your love is relentless Your love
singing with us. Yay, God. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I came to you and had a conversation with you about our financial situation here at Cypress, that we had started the year out slow, so slow, we um, our giving was lagging behind expenses to the tune of about $30,000. And in the last two weeks, you all have responded with such generosity and with such love in your hearts. And so within the last two weeks, we not only met budget, but we have closed that gap from 30000 down to a little less than $5,000 uh, that we're behind. And so I so appreciate your belief in our ministry and in what we're doing and your willingness to support it. I just ask, let's all stay faithful as we go forward so we can continue to be the kind of blessing in this world that we all long to be. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, from the whole Cypress tribe, for your faithfulness in responding to our financial situation and stay faithful as we move forward in this year. Yay, God, and way to go, Cyprus. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cyprus Online. Go ahead and put in the comments where you're watching from and who you're watching with. Last week was Easter, and we had an awesome weekend. If you were with us for the first time last weekend, we're so glad that you came out, and we're glad that you're back with us this weekend. And if you're connecting with us this morning for the first time, welcome. We are so glad you chose to check us out today, and we trust that you're enjoying your experience so far. We would like to ask you to take the next step by filling out a digital connection card. This will allow us the opportunity to reach out to you, introduce ourselves, and get to know you just a little bit better. You'll find a link to that connection card in the chat window right now. Well, kids and parents, this Friday night is our family movie night right here on the front lawn. And then students coming up on April 24th, that students in 6th to 12th grade will be meeting up at Sky Zone. Um, if you want more information on these events, you can visit our events page on our website or you can text events to 727-291-4491. And on that events page or when you use the text word events, you'll also see events for adults like the Habits of Jesus class coming up, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, as well as cafe nights that happens every Wednesday night. And Cypress giving is still super easy. You can give online via text, mail, or you can swing by during the week and drop it off to us here at the church. Well, it's about time to continue in our service today. Let's get ready to hear from Douglas. <laughs> Well, a good day to you, and uh, welcome to Cyprus Online. Uh, I'd like to pray to start our time together. Uh, so I invite you, wherever you are in this moment, to uh, just pause here for a second, and, and let's, um, let's pray and ask God to speak to us in these moments. Father, we, we, we pause at the outset here, and we just want to thank you so much for this beautiful day and for this, this beautiful moment we have stepped into to... Uh, celebrate and connect with you and, and each other. So, Father, remind us right now in this moment that we are not alone in this world. We have you and we have each other. And therefore, we believe because we have you and we have each other, we really have a hope and we have a future. So, God, we invite you now to please speak to us in these moments. Would you put dreams in our hearts and the courage to pursue them so that so that we might be a reflection of your heart to this world. And we ask this in that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. All right, uh, I've discovered there are certain questions uh, that the implications of how we answer them uh, can profoundly impact the entire trajectory of our future. And I'm going to toss one of these questions out to you now in this moment. And here's the question. Um, is the future, think about the future, is the future something that has been predetermined and all we can do is simply enter into it, or is the future something that is pliable and we actually have a hand in helping to, to create it? Or maybe to say it another way, uh, has someone, something, some force already decided for you and for the world what's going to roll out into the future? And all you can do is step into it. So in the final analysis, you have no voice, no say whatsoever uh, into the future that is created and the future that you enter into. No voice into how your story plays out. And it's just a reality you can step into. Or is your future story something where you have a voice in it? 
you have a say into the to the how and and, and the and the when and and the what of what rolls out in the course of your life. So is it all just fate or is there some fluidity into the future? Now, whether you realize it or not, this question, how you answer it, has absolutely huge implications on your future and on your life and how you live now. It, it determines what you're going to pay attention to and what you're just going to ignore in your life, or what you're willing to attempt and what you're just going to step back from. It has an impact on, on how you pray and what you pray for. And this question is an absolute biggie. And we're going to look at some scripture on this. But before we read scripture, let me kind of um, frame this up a little bit more for us. And I want you to think uh, of, of, of housing, the context of housing and your future. So I'll frame it up like this. Is the future you're entering into, uh, is it more like um, A, uh, some kind of uh, uh, assigned living space? Or is it B, kind of like Ikea? You buy it and you build it, it's, it's all up to you. Or is it really something more like a co-op that you step into with a design builder? So is the future you're entering into, is it A, sort of like um, assigned living space? Think uh, freshman college dorm, if you want to think of that, or maybe military barracks, where you have no say. All you do is show up, and somebody says to you, uh, here's your room, there's your bunk, uh, put your clothes in this, and the shower is down the hall. And you have no say for the furnishings, the decor, or color schemes. It, it is what it is. And all you can do is step into that space and to be able to experience it. Um, is that your future? Think of that for your future. Uh, you don't shape it. You don't uh, determine it or choose it. It's something you're simply going to step into. So you not, have no real say this year whether you gain 20 pounds or lose 20 pounds. You have no real say whether your finances are going to be bullish or bearish. Uh, no real say whether your marriage is going to deepen or the divide is going to grow for you. It's all a matter of, of faith. It's been assigned to you. Uh, it's like an assigned living space. Or is your future like option B? It's kind of like Ikea. You buy it, you build it, it's a solo deal and it's all up to you. I know a guy uh, who had a dream of building his own log cabin. So he worked really hard for a number of years, saved his money bought some property, went out to the property, and fell a bunch of trees to create a space for his home, dug up all the stumps, took all of these trees that he had dropped, and hand-hewed them to make logs, designed the layout of this house that he was going to be building, took pieces of wood slats, actually planed out and made the flooring, did the plumbing, the electricity, he, he dug septic on it, and not only that, he built all the furnishings for this home by hand. Uh, the couches, the beds, the tables, the chairs, everything in it, he built and he did. And it was a little bit less than he originally imagined. It probably is not going to appear on any um, do-it-yourself kind of TV show, but he did it. It took him 12 years, but he did accomplish it by himself. So the question is, is, is that how your future is determined? Kind of like Ikea. So whatever happens, for good or bad, or for better or for worse, whether it's in your career, uh, your marriage, your finances, the dreams you have in your life, it's all up to you. And it's up to you alone. There's no help, uh, no provision, no wisdom coming to you from heaven. It's sort of a bootstrap thing. Is, is that how the future plays out? Or option C, the third option, is your future story sort of like um, a cooperative effort with a design builder. So a, a number of years ago, uh, we here at Cypress, we were, uh, we were building an addition to Studio 412 for our kids to, to house our growing kids ministry. And so our board sat down and we had an idea of, of how we want to utilize the space, how we wanted things to be able to flow and, and for the elevation of it. But we quickly realized there were things that were far beyond our wisdom, far beyond our expertise, and we were going to need some help if we were going to be able to build something we'd be happy with. So we co-opted with a design builder uh, who had contractors, who had engineers, um, who had the design people. 
who we sat and we grabbed a hold of their wisdom. And the end result is we had something way, way better than if we were to have built this thing ourselves. So is that how the future plays out? Like a design build. We have a say, we have a role to play, but we're not the only voice who's speaking into this. Uh, it is made way better because we're cooperating with the design builder of the universe, God. And we lean into his wisdom, we lean into his power, we lean into his provision. So which is it, if you were to pick option A, B, or C for your future? Is it like an, an assigned living space? Is it B, uh, like Ikea, you buy it, you build it, a solo deal? Or is it really more like a co-op, cooperative effort with the design builder. Like I said, the way you answer this question will have profound impact on the future that you're stepping into. Because if your future is simply an assigned living space, well then, like why try? Why even try to say no to chocolate or to work on your marriage? Because it's all fate anyway. Okay, sera, sera, as the French say. Um, It'll be what it will be. What what has happened is going to happen. Just accept it. But if your future is like Ikea, uh, that it's all up to you and and your efforts, then you better roll up your sleeves and you better get to work. You better work really hard right now. And not only you better get to work hard, but you better downsize your expectations for the future because you have limited knowledge and limited abilities and limited expertise. So downsize your future. But if your future story is something that is shaped by you and by God together in in a cooperative effort, then you'd better really learn how to dial into God's wisdom and God's power and God's provision. And then you also better take some personal initiative so you are giving God some material to use that he can then create this better future. So me, I'm of the opinion and I live my life that the future we experience, the future that I want to enter into, is best realized only with the cooperative effort of of the builder of this universe. So we're going to look at some words now from Scripture. And these words come from um, one of the most accomplished, successful, and wisest men who ever walked on the planet, Solomon. And uh, this guy had a resume to die for. I mean, if you had his resume, you could, probably, you could probably get any job around the planet that you wanted. So Solomon reaches a point later in life, and he's looking back on his life and looking about you know, all these experiences and all that he's accomplished. And Solomon oversaw the, the, the building of the temple in Jerusalem, which is considered one of the architectural wonders of the ancient world. Solomon uh, managed to amass amassed like a Fort Knox signed a financial portfolio. He brokered peace with with all the enemies of Israel. He instituted a really fair and just judicial system. It was like days of Camelot for Israel during this time. And it caught the attention of, of neighboring countries. And so neighboring rulers actually came to him and said, We want to experience what you're experiencing. We want our future to look like what you're you're presently realizing. And in Psalm 127, Solomon reveals the how this all happened. And Solomon speaks in this moment like he often did with, with a proverb. And Solomon says these words in the book of Psalms, chapter 127, verse number one. Solomon says, unless the Lord builds the house, Those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. So Solomon's saying to us, you see this beautiful temple? It's it's amazing, isn't it? Um, You you see this financial prosperity across our country. Uh, You see the great relationships that we have with with our neighbors, neighboring countries. And you want to experience it for your future. And who wouldn't? Then Solomon says this, Now, here's the deal. Here's what you need to know. I had a part, and God had a part. So so we had to go and cut the lumber and carry the stone to make this temple. But God made the provision of of all of these supplies and all the wisdom it took to be able to build this. 
And we have watchmen who, who guard our gates at night. But you need to know, it is God who was our ultimate protector. So we had a part in this, and God had a part in this. And, and I can't do God's part, and God seems remarkably unwilling to do my part. So Solomon says these words, and we need to wrap our hearts and our minds around them. Because there's this future that I want to experience. There are these hopes that I have as I move forward. And Solomon says, I can't just sit back, put my feet up, and say, all right, God, do your thing. Do your thing, God. Uh, make it happen. I pray you work. Solomon says, no, no. You've got to understand. It took work. It took sweat. It took effort to build a house. And it takes diligence and it takes training to watch the city gates at night. So he's saying, I've got a part. I had a part in all of this. And that part is the material that God takes in his hands and God uses to create this better future. And I think about this because I think about the future that I want to experience and the future that I think you want to experience. You know, moving forward into the future, we want to have some great relationships. We want to have um, whole, healthy, well-adjusted kids. We want to have health in our own lives. As we look in the future, we want to experience some financial freedom, success in our careers, and have a vibrant spirituality. We want all of these things in our future. And Solomon is saying to us, if these things are going to happen, you've got a part to play. There's some things that, that you have to do. So if, if you want a soulmate relationship with someone, you're going to have to do the hard work of conflict resolution. You want to have some, some well-adjusted kids. You're going to have to invest in these kids. You're going to have to watch over their lives and discipline them when they, when they need discipline. You have a part in all of this. Uh, you want to experience some financial freedom in your future. Well, you're going to have to live within your means, and you're going to have to learn to save for the future. You want a healthy you. You're going to have to diet and exercise. Um, you want to have a successful career, then you're going to have to show up at work, have the best attitude in the place, and work harder than anybody else. You want to experience sobriety. You're going to have to go to meetings, and not just go to meetings. You're going to have to work the steps. You want a vibrant spirituality. Well, then you're going to have to pray, and you're going to have to put your nose in the Scriptures so you learn to listen for the voice of God. Solomon says, all these things, there can be in your future. You have a part. You have to play in this. But the good news is this, Solomon adds, but God's got a part. God's got a piece of this. And this is really, really good news because when God's in the equation, it's a game changer, an absolute game changer. Because all of a sudden you realize, you know what? My future, it is not all dependent upon my knowledge. It's not all dependent upon my abilities. It's not dependent upon my connections. It's not all dependent upon my resources. God's in this deal. And as Jesus said with, in the Scriptures, with God, everything is possible. And this is such good news to know that God is in the equation. And so our future can be bigger and brighter than ever being our own. Because as soon as we start dreaming of a better future, aren't there those voices that start shouting in our head to us? These voices that, that, that scream at us. What are you thinking? You could never do that. You could never become that. Remember what happened the last three times. No, wait. Remember what happened the last five times. That future is for somebody else and not you. You just need to learn to accept. You are where you are, and it is what it is for you because you don't have what it takes. But with God in the equation, with God in the equation, Solomon says, we need to upsize our expectations and we need to expand our dreams. We human beings, we have this tendency to, to attempt and to expect way too little in life for a God who is so remarkably great and wonderful. And so we end up choosing these, these smaller, lesser lives when God is wanting to do something so much bigger and so much more beautiful than Scripture saying than we could even imagine is what God puts into our future. And so we, we, we decide we're just going to settle until really striving forward with our lives. 
And so I just wonder, I mean, God puts dreams in our hearts for the future. What dream has God put into your heart for your future? What, what life is God calling you to? Don't wait to step into it. Whatever you do, don't wait to step into it. Because if you wait for the perfect day under the perfect sun until all your ducks are lined up in a row, you will wait till you die. Solomon says to us, with God, we look to our futures. We can dream. We can risk. We can dare. Because you don't want to one day find yourself saying, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. God puts potential in us. He never intended that we die with our potential in us. But what He intends is when we reach our last day that all of our potential has been wrung out, squeezed out of us. So we've reached our potential. So God, He's put a dream in your heart because He puts a dream in all of our hearts for the future. God has put a dream in your heart. So go for it. Go for it. You do your part and you trust God to do His. Because the future awaits those with the faith and the courage to create it. To create it with God. And by the way, don't underestimate how much your life matters. Your life really, really matters, even in the large scheme of things. Because there are things that God has designed you specifically to do in this world. And if you don't do them, they get, the good gets left undone. It doesn't happen. The wrong kind of a future gets created. So step into this future God is calling you to. And you and God create a bigger, better future. You have a hope. You have a future. You have a destiny that awaits you. Because God is in the equation of your life. Ah, Father, we pause and we pray and we thank you. We do have a hope and we have a future. We have this destiny that awaits us because we have you. So, Father, give us the faith and the courage to step into this now and to create something bigger and more beautiful than we could ever imagine. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.